Well, it's time to be back in Mallorca. We've uh, we've had a fantastic time in the UK, but uh, it's been a long time. We've been away for six weeks now, and so now we're back in Mallorca. We've come down to Palma Nova. It's Sunday, fairly early. It's about 10 o'clock. The place is already starting to look busy. The car park where we parked at the top of the, top of the road was pretty full and uh, there's plenty of people already having a little walk around and it's hot. Very hot. Very hot. So it does actually seem an age since we were last uh, walking along the promenade here in Palma Nova and uh, it's all coming to life, it has come to life and I guess it's been really busy over the summer while we've been away, all the beach beds are out and lots of people are already on the beach uh, even though it's still quite early and we noticed as we were walking down the street cleaners were washing down the streets as they do here uh, keep everywhere nice and clean ready for a new day it's Sunday so I'm going to try and get in some shade <laughs> the strange thing was when we were in the UK and, and uh, Someone actually commented on it was strange to hear me say that uh, we needed to find some shade in the UK where we had uh, really great weather almost all the time we were there. It was uh, quite sunny and hot. Not quite as hot as here, but not far off, or at least it felt it. But here, the sun's shining, the boats are out on the sea, and uh, just looking at the beach there, it's all been cleaned up. We've had a tractor or a machine of some sort going over it. Sand looks like snow. Nice and clean and smooth, freshly laid. And people already in the bars having their breakfasts, coffees, maybe even an early morning tipple. Not sure how far we're going to manage to walk today because it's very warm, even though it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. So we just said that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the sun's creeping up, and we're going to head straight away for a for a coffee in one of our favourite places, which is the the Beehive. Hopefully, we can be able to find a, a nice shady seat. I usually have a beer while I'm there, or a shandy, it's coffee morning today. Let's cross over here. see all the, the bars getting ready for the day. find a more shady spot for Anita. Sorry. How about here? That sounds good. So yes, we are finding a nice shady spot here in the Palmena, which is the beehive overlooking the sea, overlooking the beach, and it's a beautiful day. There is a, a small breeze, which is uh, it's okay if you're in the shade, but in the sun it is actually really quite hot. So um, we'll have a little walk along, but it will be, be a short walk, I think, today, just to break us in. We've got to get used to this again. And uh, anyway, we've got our coffee, so uh, we'll get on with the coffee and then we can get on with the walk. And we've had our coffee. <laughs> we've had our coffee at La Colmena, which is the beehive just across the road, and it's just seeking out the shade. But, uh, 
It's not a lot to be had at the moment. And so we arrived back quite late on Thursday night and uh, traveling through the airport, um, both ends was nothing too bad. At Bristol, uh, there was a bit of a queue to go through security, uh, but nothing like the horror stories we heard about earlier on in the summer. Uh, there was evidence that there was a, like some tenting outside uh, to uh, protect the queues that were forming. So I did see pictures of Bristol Airport with very long queues. Um, but inside, uh, yeah, no, not really. Didn't, we didn't check any baggage in, but there didn't seem to be much of a queue there. Uh, but up, upstairs where you go to the um, security, there was a queue, and it was one of these ones that you sneak around backwards and forwards. And that did take about 35, 40 minutes to, to get through. Uh, but once we were through that, we were into the departure lounge and that was quite comfortable. No problem finding a seat, air conditioning was on. Still pretty warm though. And uh, we had quite a long wait because we arrived um, at the airport about three hours before the, uh, the due time, which is what uh, Ryanair were recommending. Uh, getting on the flight, no issues at all really. Um, we were in row two and uh, probably not the best row to be in, certainly row, row one. People had to pay 30 pounds or 30 euros to sit there and then they, and moved. they moved because it's right by the toilet and people are just queuing up and talking and messing about by the toilet. So if you're tempted to pay for that row one seat, I suggest you don't. <laughs> there are better seats on the plane even row two um i don't think we'd choose that again definitely not no we go a bit further back so just having a quick look before i carry on uh the beach you can see just while we've had a coffee uh the beach has really livened up and there's loads of people in the sea now it's a, a green flag out and an orange best place to be in the sea yeah Well, you know what? I've got those steps to go up, so I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll catch up with you when I get to the top of those steps. So I managed to get to the top of the steps, and that's going to be hard in this heat. But, uh, just looking down at the sea, uh, it doesn't look as clear as it has been, and uh, Anita's just been commenting that some uh, fam 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 uh, friends of the family, family friends, uh, we're here a couple of weeks ago on a cruise and they stopped off and went into, I think it was Calamayor Beach and they said the water wasn't too clean at all, there was lots of plastic and things. I can't see stuff floating around but it isn't actually as clear as it was it's earlier on. Murky, it? But it is a little bit choppy as well, there's waves and uh, that brings up uh, the mud from the, the, the bottom. It's still not bad. And the beach is certainly looking very clean. Photograph. And it's photo time. So getting back to our trip, um, yeah, in the departure lounge in Bristol, it was fine. We got on the aeroplane and the, the row two seats that I just said were not really ideal. We did actually have the whole row though, we were, which was quite cool, quite like that. Um, and uh, delays, well, it took off about five or ten minutes late, but it arrived early. Um, which is the normal story for Ryanair, or at least our experience. So no delays at all. When we got to Palmer, there was a little bit of a delay of actually getting off the plane, um, because initially the um, the stewards actually lowered the the steps down to the to the ground, but then uh, somebody must have said something. They had to retract them, and uh, we ended up going through one of the air bridges so that made it a lot easier a lot more comfortable going uh, into the airport which was fine walking through the airport it's always a long walk um, just a warning to anybody it's uh, always a long walk through Palmer Airport and I got I actually got confused as to where I actually was because um, it was so busy and uh, it didn't actually look like the normal terminal but it was and uh, going through the passport control, it's put your passport into the scanner if you're an adult and uh, you've got no children with you. And uh, that happened really efficiently, no problem at all. 
and uh, there was only one man on the stamping desk but there was no queue at all uh, getting passports stamped because we are residents here we don't have our passports stamped and one thing I noticed um, as we were walking through it said to have your passport open to an empty page for stamping so if you've got a 40 page um, passport that means you can only have it stamped 40 times that's 20 in and 20 out so if you make 20 uh, trips to Mallorca your passport will be full and you need a new one or at least that's potentially what could happen I think you can buy extra pages and I think you, you can order one you can order a, a bigger passport you used to be able to but once it's full you can't actually staple pages in there so it would actually mean buying a new passport which is going to cost you a lot of money so another one of those Brexit benefits I've come to the top of the steps and I'm going to turn the camera off as we go down once the passport stamped it's the keep, keep on walking keep on walking until you get to uh, the next stage which is to make sure that you've got your COVID certificate which shows you've been fully vaccinated including any boosters um, and uh, you, you can come if you've, if you've um, recently uh, recovered from Covid or if you've um, had a PCR test before you come so if you've not been vaccinated you can still come you just have to have that PCR that was really quick though gave them our QR code it was scanned and they just said welcome and away we went and uh, that was us through the airport fortunately uh, our son knew what time we were arriving and uh, he met us there to take us home we arrived in the evening quite wasn't too late actually about 10 o'clock so it wasn't so hot and uh, we weren't in the heat I think that's quite a cool time to arrive and you get home and it's more or less get your bags out and go to bed and then and then comes the cleaning part We've just come past McDonald's and uh, right in front we've got the Hotel Tropico and we do at last have some shade we can walk in. And we've got these uh, three wheel trikes which I, I've seen them hired in Pagera and they go out on like a convoy they, uh, as a leader and you just follow the convoy to wherever it's going looks like great fun we've never done anything like that probably, probably not our sort of thing but uh, people who do it seem to be having a good time so we get back to to Mallorca and uh, well we get start to get back straight away into the the routine of things so get back and the cupboard's bare or at least the fridge was bare because we were away for such a long time so uh, first morning back I had to go shopping because Anita had to go and have her hair done hasn't it doesn't it look hair lovely and nails. hair and nails done thank you Tony and Charlotte and I get sent off to Mercadona which is one of the supermarkets in uh, Palmanova just on the outskirts of Palmanova at the San Caliu end I go there because uh, I can park underground, it means the car's not in the sun and uh, it's, well, supermarkets are cool but there is a restriction now that they can't... Oh, hello. That's nice, that was Jackie and Ben who'd flown in from Bournemouth, uh, they live in Christchurch, uh, which is very near to Bournemouth and uh, they've been watching our YouTube channel for some time. When they get home, they're going to be catching up on our UK videos. <laughs> There's plenty of those to catch up on. Um, I think I broke up a few records actually, um, and videos that we made while we were in the UK, just because we were we were so busy. We we just did something every single day, pretty much, and, uh, and I video recorded just about everything we did. So. Uh, interested in what we were up to in the UK I've actually made a, 
a playlist for the UK summer 2022 and you'll see all the different places that we visited but we're back in Parmanova and uh, yes we're back to the normal way of life so we did the shopping I did the shopping in Mercadona but obviously I forgot things or they weren't on my shopping list so we had to go to Porta P so I've already done a, a video of that Porta P Porta P is the shopping center as you go into Palma from this end from the Palma over end as you approach Palma uh, it's right there as soon as you get to the sea uh, is Porta P shopping center and it's, a, it's quite a big shopping center on three floors if you're in a car there's two floors of car parking uh, if you're on a bus there's a bus stop right outside going from Palmanova, Magaluf, Pagera, any of these resorts they all go past uh, Porta P and Porta P's just got all of the sort of fashion -y type shops it's got pretty much everything but it's also got a, a huge um, supermarket hypermarket which is uh, Carrefour and it's actually the closest big supermarket to us so it's one we quite often go to to do our weekly shop we're just walking past uh, an area here which has got trees on on the the beach and uh, saying to Anita as we were sitting having our coffee that uh, actually lying on a beach or doesn't really appeal to me it doesn't really appeal to Anita either so but this this I do quite like you know, it's bringing a chair bringing a table um, a bottle of chilled rosé water water oh sorry water and uh, a little picnic and sitting on the beach in the breeze is great and that's what a lot of the locals do yeah so Adam and Jamie uh, used to come down to Palmanova not in the height of the season but a little bit uh, it's a little bit cooler and uh, we used to bring our table and chair and we used to sit there they now do different things so they're really into paddle boarding at the moment and we're just at the Paradise Bar just uh, having a look to see who's on and so they've got various live acts that come on at different times a few weeks ago we were walking past and uh, Leapy Lee was here so we stopped to say hello to him uh, Lee's someone we've known almost as long as we've lived here he's been here longer than us um, certainly remember going to his Curtains Bar in Son Caliu he will, um, he will tell you lots of stories about that if you ever speak to Well, I don't know whether he will. <laughs> but uh, he, he doesn't have very fond memories, I don't think, of Curtains Bar. Last time I think we were here, they were doing some work on the children's playground. There's no children playing in the playground today because it's just it's too warm. And uh, I think they'd rather be on the beach or in the sea, probably in the sea. And just looking out to the sea, lots of water activities. So you've got the big sailing boats, sort of mega yacht type things, and there's uh, quite a few billionaire yachts here dotted around the island, I've seen mentioned in the newspaper. But you've got the smaller boats as well. We've seen a lot of jet skis uh, out there. Um, hopefully they're just keeping away from the swimmers it is all um, roped off with boys so uh, they shouldn't be in those areas lots of people will be in the sea and there's the pedlos and there's the pedaling on land here looks like fun too and each and I did threaten to do that now somebody was asking me about disabled toilets so here's toilets and it's just 50 cents and it's disabled so there's not really a key so someone was asking them but apparently in some parts of Europe there is a euro disabled key which gives you admission to a disabled toilet I've never come across this so that one there has got a disabled toilet in the middle but it's your 50 cents so stack up with 50 cents is, so you've just got that if you need to spend a penny or 50 cents <laughs> And here's the Calablanca. If 
out by the pool, at the bar there. The cool drink. nice on the Calablanca Terrace. I've read some funny stories about towels and beds. And some beds with towels on. People racing out at the crack of dawn or even just after midnight. Or Again, it's not our sort of thing so it never actually affects us. Notice that we always try to avoid the sun. But I know most people, most many people who come to Mallorca and Palma Nova do like to sit and lie in the sun. I know am I to say anything against that. You didn't hear what you said. <laughs> That's sitting and lying in the sun. It's, it's something maybe, maybe we did do it years and years ago. Got the ombre solaire out. <laughs> I remember that. Distinctly remember the smell. Here's um, one of the beaches bars that we like to go to. Um, this is the Barbuda. Do some really nice food here. So uh, when we get the chance, I guess we're going to be coming here. We're just getting ready for the day, like everywhere else. Lady Dies, which is just behind here, has been closed since the pandemic's never opened up again. But the Diana Beach Bar, which is this one, is open. They've done a lot of refurbishment here and uh, they're already serving from 8.30 in the morning. We could come here really early and have breakfast. Go for a very early walk and have breakfast gone. That sounds like a good idea. Set us up for the day. And then next to that's the, the Chinese. Happy Chinese. So we're gonna walk up and we're gonna walk around the Santa Lucia. Trying wherever possible to stay in the shade. The beach is so busy. It really is. I don't know, it's good to see. It's great for the island. Uh, to see that there are so many people here. It's a Sunday, of course, so you do expect to see lots of people here because you get the locals. But the sea is really busy today. Um, there is um, very, it's very political, our island, and it's uh, there's no one government as it has overall majority. So we've got a bit of a rainbow sort of coalition of all sorts of different parties, and uh, some of those parties are really against mass tourism and uh, they want to see a reduction in the number of tourists on the island and to some extent i do understand it just clog the island up i think at one point this summer on a particular day there were two million people on the island and that's a doubling of the population and yeah. yesterday there were five cruise ships in when they drove past five cruise ships yeah now uh, you may think, well, it's a holiday island, but if you double the population, you have to double a lot of other things like production of water so that everyone can have a drink or a shower. Um, you have to have sewage that can cope with a doubling of the population. You have to have electricity that can power a doubling of the population. So, so the infrastructure has to double. And uh, I think that's probably one of the things that they're concerned with because in the winter time, hotels like the Santa Lucia will probably close. Certainly over the past long number of years, Santa Lucia's closed during the winter time. It used to be open all the way year round, but uh, it's closed now during the winter time. So that time the population will go back, back down to one million. And 
you're still having to uh, have that two million in reserve for when the season restarts. So that's uh, that's part of the argument about it. Um, you may well say, well, why don't we just get two million all the year round? Well, the island gets crowded because it's empty in the middle of the island, but places like Parmanova and Magaluf, Pagera, these holiday resorts, Aranal, and then over on the other side, the Calador, Calamilor, and up on the north, the Alcudia, the Poyenza areas. You won't be coming all day again, don't That's worry. where the people gravitate to, and so they become intensely populated for a very short period of time. So when we say the, the island doubles in population, it's not spread out evenly. It's over very small areas. That's me being a bit serious. Anyway, we'll just carry on walking around the Santa Lucia and uh, the governments, I'm sure, will carry on discussing it. And one thing that, uh, <laughs> another thing that's almost brought the government down is uh, Real Mallorca Football Club. So, Real Mallorca, we went there last night and they, they did lose. They lost 1-2 against Betis. But it wasn't fair. It, well, yeah. They missed a few chances, Mallorca missed a few chances, um, Betis got two penalties, one of them was a clear handball, the second, the second one was uh, dubious, it looked more as though somebody and one of their players actually elbowed our player, but uh, the penalty was given, it stood, it didn't go to VAR, and uh, Mallorca lost, but the controversy is more about the funding, the government has decided they want the Mallorca Football Stadium to be called visitmallorca.com or something like that. And uh, MESS, which is one of the political parties, doesn't want mass tourism and so they don't want that. There's 1.8, nearly 2 million euros at stake here of taxpayers' money, but uh, I think it'll go through fine because they have opposition parties who are fine with that. The new stadium's coming along really nicely. I'll see if I can get some more pictures and videos of that just to show the progress. We're just going past the Santa Lucia. Just before we left we came here to meet uh, Shauna and Claire who were on their holiday here. And I think for the most part they had a, a good time. Claire had a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of an issue but uh, Hopefully she's fully recovered from that now. And, uh, well, they couldn't, it couldn't have been too bad because they've already booked up for next year. So 8th of September next year, Shauna and Claire will look forward to seeing you again. And this is what it's like coming towards the end of August now of 2022. getting a bit warm here so we'll just walk around so we're, uh, we're not going to go all the way to the end here normally we'd walk up uh, past the olive tree which usually have a little stop in the olive tree for a little cool drink but we're not going to be doing that today One evening. we'll do that maybe in the evening and then on towards the Hawaii over there uh, but it just really is hot so we're actually gonna take a walk through the back streets and uh, see if we can catch some shade uh, this is the San Matias Beach, that's the San Matias Hotel over there, and uh, this one is equally busy. So let's just walk around this one and then head back, see if we can find a bit of shade. So a few people have told us about the barbecue place here, which I think we may have stopped there once or twice we've passed. It's a long time ago. There's so many places that uh, we need to visit and we just uh, have only so many hours in the day and so many days in the week and year so we'll try and catch up with that when we can so we're gonna head back towards our car but we're gonna go back this way mind the step ice cream isn't open yet but it will be opening up soon i'm sure where the best shade is.
these trees that uh, they nicely cut uh, do provide some quite good shade as we're walking along. So we're just coming past on the left of Three Brothers and then the entrance to the Santa Lucia Hotel on the right. Three Brothers is always very popular with the, uh, the tourists that come here and watch a football match. But what is new is across the road, the green place, which is Iroko. And it's somewhere we've not tried yet, so it's on, a, on our list of places to visit. It certainly looks pretty swish. It's sitting outside, so we'll give that a go. Hi, Shops open, Getting pretty busy. And uh, there's the entrance to Santa Lucia just there. Always a lot of mobility scooters uh, parked outside there. So if you are in need uh, of assistance when you get to Palma Nova, then uh, they can be rented might be wise to inquire before you come though just to make sure there's going to be one available for you so just a little alleyway that goes through to the promenade to the beach we're going to stay on the cooler street side it is actually it's noticeably cooler here much better in the shade much better in the shade a little gentle breeze not too much there's lady dies on the left and uh, We wait to see what happens to that. Nothing's going to happen this year now, I think. Uh, but it's in too, too good a position to stay empty for any length of time. So we'll see what happens. There's a little bit of a fairground here. There's a children's park which we've uh, watched during the lockdown. That's actually when they built this children's park. There was a park there before, but they redeveloped it during the lockdown. It took them ages to do, to finish. Um, but during the summer, they've put some other attractions, including a merry-go-round and a, a bit of a bouncy thing over there. Bit of a smell of Spanish drains there. Bit pongy. <laughs> so we're actually just behind now, we're to the Barbuda beach. But this is gelatious again, somewhere we've been recommended to uh, to try. It's sort of on our list of places to do. And across the road, Monroe's. And on this side, Taylor's. We had a really good burger. Was. Taylor's, I can't remember what Anita had, but uh, we both really enjoyed the food here at Taylor's. I think I had a chicken walk. So, Jim McDonald, this is for you. Monroe's, Taylor's, your bit of the world. <laughs> Oh, and this used to be exactly my business. This is exactly what I used to do. And I had a business here, I used to put names on caps. Just like that. Fascinating to watch. I remember the days. I remember the noise. Uh, that's a one head machine. So you do one cap at a time, it's popular with shops. Um, so they just do one item as you go along. Um, the embroidery machine that we had was like six of those joined together. So you did six at a time. So you did six caps. So we weren't really into doing one-off things. We were more doing uh, shirts for businesses. 
boats, ships, bars, restaurants, anyone who wanted a name or a logo putting onto a uniform. And uh, we do six at a time. A lot of golf events. And they had the logo of the golf event. And sometimes multiple logos of the golf events. There's Tandoori Night. We've been threatening to go there. That's another one on our to-do list. Getting, it's coming up towards half past 11 and as you can imagine the, the temperature is rising. did see a thermometer which only said 29 degrees and maybe that's right uh, but when you're in the sun in Mallorca the, the actual feel of the temperature is a lot higher and uh, of course we've got the ultraviolet rays which is what we were so concerned about really so when you come in, don't forget the suntan lotion. If you've got a parasol, good idea. Or a hat, of course. So I always tend to wear a hat. And just across the road, we've got the Bermudas, which is where Jackie was. Did they say they were saying the Bermudas? Just across the way there. And uh, across the road, you've got uh, Banana Joe's. Tobacco, which I'll not mention because I don't like smoking. And <laughs> uh, Il Tano is a place where we've actually had an Italian, and Castaway is another place we've said we'll go. <laughs> so many places that we've said we'll go, and we've just not quite got around to it because of the so many things that we do. We do have a fairly hectic uh, social life here in Mallorca. Uh, not just football and we've got quite a bit of catching up because we've been away for six weeks we've got uh, friends and family to to see and to catch up with birthdays to celebrate and then we've got friends of course who've coming here on their holidays so Selena and Mikey arrived just the other day I haven't seen them yet them the next day or two. Nice bit of shade here, look at that. Oh, perfect for you, dear. Shade all the way along. Across the road, the Senses Hotel. That's the one just up above there with the parasols, multicolored parasols in the pool area. And uh, I've been up on the roof, they've got a pool area on the roof as well. Looking down, it's, uh, the pool area's got uh, seating in the water and really does look quite cool. And it's probably one of the highlight hotels here in uh, Palma Nova. And that's because it's probably got the best manager in Palma Nova. A little bit biased there because he's a friend of our family's. Panko. If you stay at the senses, you can tell the manager you know Stephen and Anita. And you'll get absolutely nothing for it, but <laughs> he knows us. Just noticing in the distance there the one of the boats that takes you on a cruise has just pulled in and that's actually something I quite like to do and uh, we've not done that for a long time but 
be quite nice to go on one of those cruises. It would give us a different video to do um, from the water. And it's, uh, it's quite an experience, quite a nice experience. But uh, I don't know, sitting up on the top, I mean, you might think we're in the sun a bit too much. She'd need need two parasols. Need to go inside. <laughs> but they are good fun, and uh, some of them have got uh, underwater viewing areas. And uh, sometimes they stop to allow you to go swimming. And it just gives you that different vista, different view of the islands, viewing the island from the sea. It's like when that mega yacht over there. Big, big queue. I hope the people who are on the top deck have got plenty of sun cream because I don't see a parasol amongst them. They're going to be under the grill, as it were. <laughs> They'll be like crispy bacon when they get on. Hotel Tropico and, uh, and Shauna and uh, Claire did actually make two trips to Mallorca this year, a bit cheeky I think, uh, but they stayed at the Tropico for their first visit and we met them in the cocktail bar there which is so convenient for the beach so if all you're interested in is the beach then the Tropico is very convenient. So do look at the reviews because there have been some good ones and some bad ones and we did hear, we did speak to a couple walking along here and they thought their room was terrible uh, but once they complained and uh, spoke to the management they were in fact moved to a, a much better room and they were much happier but that's not going to be possible um, at all times because places are pretty much fully booked we were, well, not me, but Anita was hoping to go back uh, next week actually to the, to the UK and she needed to be in the south of England so any other London airports Southampton, Bournemouth, Bristol would have done but there were no flights at all no direct flights with anybody uh, so and the ones that were there were hop and a skip and very, very expensive. But the cheapest way to have done it would have been to fly to Glasgow Prestwick Airport. And uh, I think she would have had to have changed the airport to Glasgow and then get the train down to, Lo uh, train down to London. But it really wasn't on, so she abandoned it, the idea of going back. So uh, we've, we don't have anything uh, booked at all at the moment for later this year. We're staying in Mallorca for the time being. Now the football season's started and things are a little bit back to normal. It would be nice to go to some away matches to wait and see if there's uh, anything going to be organised. When we do that, we like to go with the supporters and become part of the crowd this is um, where we booked our marine land tickets it's called lemon Hermon tours and uh, they managed to get us some tickets for marine land which are actually less than those online so it's worth a try. There was a discount that they, they could apply that I couldn't apply online. 
fish dangling. Mm. And, he's, and he's just checking her steps. 5,500. 5,500 is good. Did suggest going for a walk this evening. After seeing how we feel, because it could be still very warm this evening, but at least we've got out today. perfume shop and there was a big smell of perfume, very nice. This is Ciro's restaurant. Palms. Hunt. Oh, it's got these palms on the side. Mentioned them in many of the videos, the Sago palms, sago palms that uh, have this poisonous fruit on them. Which is, looks okay as long as nobody eats it or no animals eat it. And the reason we've mentioned it was because um, a friend of ours lost her puppy through eating one of those uh, fruits. It's uh, equally poisonous to children as well, or adults, so uh, you just have to be really careful. Because most adults wouldn't normally go and eat one, but uh, a child might think it's something that could be eaten. But Ciro's got fantastic uh, views over the beach here, which is now getting really busy. Green flags out, so it's safe. Sizzlingly hot now. There's a Tui bus coming up. Just to my left is Fantasia Golf, just at the top, it's set back, so it's quite easy to miss. But uh, certainly our family in the past have always enjoyed Fantasia Golf. There's lots of different uh, routes you can go around there, or you can go around them all if you like, 72 holes, um, and make quite occasion of it. So certainly when our children were younger, it was somewhere we used to take them. And there's a little bar so you can have a, a beer or an ice cream, coffee. sound but cooling us down a little bit.
someone was asking me about the lavender. Brush the hand, brush your hand through the lavender. Well, there's not a lot of um, lavender flowers. There's a few, but not much. There you go. We can brush our hands through it. Well, you can still smell it. Still smell the lavender. which means the lifeguard's on duty and he's uh, telling somebody they're not doing something right. <laughs> so, this is the taxi rank if you need a taxi and this is where they will normally come. Mai Tai, which is place we like to go with Barbara and John. And we uh, come to Parmanova for dinner. That's one of our go-to places. That just uh, about rounds up our little walk for today. It's been a hot one, and uh, the weather forecast looks like it's going to stay pretty warm for the next uh, few days. Well, we've had a really nice walk. It's been very, very hot. It's very breezy now. That's nice. Uh, but we're going to go home, head to the shade, and Anita, I'm sure, is going to say, can we put the air conditioning on? I guess we will. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.